This is a 1403 printer cartridge that has all the type in it for printing. It consists of five arrays on a band, 48 characters per array. That's numerics and numbers and special characters. It travels at 90 inches a second. That's continuously running while we're printing. Uh, the type travels, as I say, at 90 inches a second. And it that have to have timing that you have to hit the character that you want as it's flying by. That is produced with hammers in the rest of the printer that push the paper against the ribbon and against the type. And that causes it to print the character. Timing is needed to be able to hit the character that you want in the particular column that you want. And that's basically how it works. This is a typical cartridge the production models were a hair bit different, but basically the same thing. They're driven on one end by a motor, and it has on a band that goes holds the whole the type together. The type are clamped onto the band with a couple of screws. There are two type per slug. The slug is, as I say, clamped onto the band. They butt each other, so they're Specific different distances between all the types is, is the same all the way around. This is a picture of basically the band with a few slugs actually mounted on it. The slugs, if you the break apart down at the bottom, on the right is the back of the slug. On the left is the front of the slug with the characters. The, the slug on the right actually straddles the band and the two screws in the middle. Well, there's a clamp bar down at the bottom. That bar goes on the opposite side of the, the band. The two screws go in from the front of the type slug and are threaded into the, into the clamp bar at the bottom. And as you can see, the, on the band, the type are mounted real close to each other. They actually touch when they're in the straight condition. And of course, they separate as they go around the ends on it a little bit. But they are butted together as they go down the straightaway, and we use that to print. The band originally was made out of just a strap of metal and welded together at the end on it. Later production models, these were individual wires in the band laid side by side about 60 or so wide and then trapped between some tape to hold the fibers, the wires in place. The wire was a three thousandths diameter so it's fairly fine and hard to work with. So that's why there's tape on both sides of the band to hold the wires in place. This is obviously a broken chain. It came from the Computer History Museum on the West Coast. We were asked to see if we could somehow or other come up with a plan to rebuild the band into a workable chain. As you can see, this one is one major chunk with at least two side pieces and a few type down at the bottom. If you look real closely at the bottom left chunk, you can see broken wires stringing out through there. That's, that's the wires when they're wound together to make a flat cable, really, that all the typers clamp to, as, as we discussed before. So obviously this one has been used, full of ink, debris, and so forth. Dirty, as they would say. We would, this is where we would start with to build a new chain for someone. We would disassemble all these slugs off this chain, keep them very, and then 
obviously really have to clean them because these things butt together and any dirt between them makes the chain longer than it should be. So they have to be cleaned and probably degauss because they're a little bit magnetic. The small screws are hard to handle. If, if they're magnetic, they stick to everything. So this first thing we would have to do is clean and disassemble to get the slugs ready to be, to be able to put it back on a new band. To be able to build a new band and chain that actually works, what we had to do is actually build a new band of the wires. This is a fixture that was built to be able to wind the 3 thousandths diameter wire onto a mandrel that would be the white, right length when you get through. So the critical part of this fixture is the diameter of the mandrel to be able to produce the right length band. Very overall, this is a, just a wooden structure to basically to hold the metal mandrel that will wind the wire on. The wire comes from a spool down to the left. You can see the end of the spool. Comes up through a white wire tensioning device so it maintains a certain amount of tension on the wire as you're winding it around. The operator to do that would set along the side and then bends the wire is so small and so forth. You have a microscope that you can actually see where the wire is going as you turn the mandrel by hand and watch the wire go on. The long wooden slim stick to the top, the wire would pass through it up close to the mandrel and by moving the handle that's on the left back and forth you can actually steer the wire into the right place on the mandrel as you turn the mandrel with your left hand and watch where the wire is going through the binoculars. Not shown, you would need some very bright light right on where the wire is on the mandrel while you're watching it. Otherwise you can't see it with regular light. So this is the fixture that we used to produce a wire band which we ultimately clamped to type onto and delivered back to the Computer History Museum on the West Coast. They have used it for several years. I'm not sure how, how strongly or they've used it, how much, but to my knowledge it is still being used. But this is a fixture that we will describe in more detail later. This is a front view of the fixture for producing the wire on the, on the mandrel. It just shows you a little more clearly the, the size of the mandrel, the shiny metal piece, the relationship to where the spool is lower and to the left on it. This, this spool, we had our choice. The original production uh, chains were produced with 3 thousandths diameter wire. Due to being able to procure 3 thousandths, which was hard to find, we were able to find 4 thousandth diameter wire. This is high tension wire called music wire. And that, and the lower is, is a, actually a spool of that 4 thousandths diameter wire. Roughly, I forgot, 4,000 feet of it or something is a lot of it anyway. So that's the one we started to work with because we had very little 3 thousandths diameter wire. As it turns out, the band that we built used the 4 thousandths wire. On straight tension, it's 4 thousandths wire is stronger. 
in reality, for the width of the band, which was about a quarter of an inch, we couldn't put as many 4,000th diameter wires in the strand. This is a continual band of wire. It simply is wound on, and with 3,000th wire, it was probably around 60 turns of wire. With the 4,000th, we were down closer to 50 turns of wire. From a stress standpoint, the, the 4,000th wire with less band or less fibers was actually stronger than the 3,000th diameter version. But there's more stress as it, on the wire as it goes around each end of the cartridge. So there's uh, maybe a fatigue problem involved over time. Otherwise, we use the 4,000th and it seemed to work fine. This is Don Manning, myself, actually putting wire on the band. As you can see, I was turning the mandrel with my left hand, viewing where the wire went through the binoculars, or through the microscope on it, and my right hand is on the other end of the steering lever, so I could position the wire exactly where it was going. The intent is to lay it side by side as neatly as possible. We'll get farther into it, but there is a strip of tape that is upside down on the mandrel before we start, so that the sticky side of the tape is up. The idea being that we'll hold the wires in place once we start to take it apart. To help hold it in place, we actually put a second piece of tape on top of the wires before we remove it from the mandrel. So the wires are actually held in place by sticky tape both under and over the, the band. But the wires are laid side by side in a flat cable. This is another view of the fixture with some of the important uh, pieces identified. The mandrel, of course, is, the, is what you wind the wire on to provide the right length band. The wire itself goes up through the wooden stick at the top that I actually use to steer it onto the band in the right place as it's wound on. The red line, of course, is the wire, which you can't visibly see because it's so small. Down at the bottom is the wire spool that had miles of wire on it. It goes, passes up through the white gadget, and there's a method in there to Make sure the wire has some tension on it as it goes towards the mandrel and also to keep it from backing up in case the wire breaks or we have to, that we aren't going properly. Well, the wire spool is actually trapped between two wooden supports and we have the capability with the bolt through the thing as an axle to be able to tighten the bolt a little bit and squeeze the spool, which allows us capability of putting some drag on the spool on it. We have the same capability on the mandrel to tighten the axle bolt through it to put some drag on that so that when we stop turning, nothing backs up on its own. So that's basically the structure of while the wire passes from the wire spool through the backup, anti-backup gadget, and on through the wire guide, the end of the wire guide, which is a slotted stick with a bolt through it to squeeze it together to actually hold and steer 9,000 or 4,000th diameter wire. That's, so that's the basics of how it actually worked. The first one is picture 
that has a plate, which is a side plate on it, the separate two pieces together, called B in the pictures, are the actual mandrel that create the right dimensions to produce the band, and C is actually a plate that goes on the other side to really trap the whole band into one assembly. So A here is basically a plate that is a side plate, and the holes are in the proper place to be able to first is mount the two B sections, B1 and B2, as shown in the picture, they mount onto the side plate A. And that's the crucial part, is how you spread those two pieces, B1 and B2, apart to produce the right length band, which is wrapped around those two sections. So B1 and B2 are bolted to plate A at the right dimension to produce the right length band. And then side plate C is added to the thing to have an assembly of A, two Bs in the middle, trapped with side C. Now, the cutouts to the left in B1 and B2 are there for mounting the tape in the right place to hold the tape in place. Basically, B1 and B2 is mounted on plate A. Not shown, but uh, there are two spools, two studs, mounted in the gap to plate A, such that you, once or, or assembled, you can wrap one end of the tape into that space around one of those spools to hold the tape. It comes out the gap to the left all the way around and back into the same gap to a second spool. And they are held by screws into plate A. So you can wrap the tape around the spools, put it around the mandrels back in, and secure the other end to the other spool. And by tightening and by spinning the spool a little bit, you can tighten up the tape so it holds it firmly, very evenly spaced all the way around the mandrel, which is key for a good band. Once that is done, you haven't put the band on yet, but, but or the tape, but you could do that. And then plate C is put on the assembly to trap. B and 1 and B2 between trap plate A and C. And that makes a mandrel ready to be used to start winding the wire. This is a completed assembly of plates A, B's, and C's into a ready-to-use mandrel. As described before, in the gap to the left, you can see two posts that the tape would be wrapped around. Put it on the top with a sticky side out all the way around the, the mandrel and back in again to the second post, and by spinning the post and then tightening the screws, you can tension the band to where it's perfectly smooth and positioned all the way around. Very key to producing a good band. And that shows the type of slug assembly fixture and another small fixture for getting the slugs in the right order to put on the band. The one the taller one is what is actually used to assemble the band. 
or assemble, actually to assemble the type on the band. We now have a, a finished band off the other fixture. And it is basically looped loosely around the two white spools, one on each end, simply to hold it in place where you can work on it. Uh, the key to it is the top dirty horizontal pieces where the band lays in the slot from one end left to the other end on the right and we actually secure the type sort of in the middle of that thing. If you can maybe see there's a metal piece in the middle of the horizontal piece of wood that has a notch in it and that notch from the top is open from the top and it allows you to lay the band into that notch but it will not let a slug slide through the notch the idea being that as you assemble one slug at a time with with a back bar clamp bar and two screws we have to produce the slugs really touching each other or the band becomes too long cleanliness again is critical the slugs have to be washed and perfectly clean as you start this process otherwise the band is too long so that's, this is the fixture that's using used for assembling those slugs on to the actual band that we just produced on the mandrel the one that's laying down flat is simply a way of arranging the type in the slug the way you want to, the, the five, five arrays, so that you can put it on. Uh, as I say, this is the fixture that we use to assemble the dark blue uh, tool on laying on top of the, of the fixture is the proper size, six fluted, right size to put in the aught 80 screws that clamp the back bar to the slug, and therefore the slug and everything to the band. So that's the size screws. The pieces that go together have to be demagnetized. Otherwise, you have trouble handling screws. They stick to everything because they're so small. They're about 80 with, with the on it. This is a top view of the same assembly fixture that shows in a little more detail how the band is looped on the two spools at the right simply to hold it in place, how the band lays in the track from one end to the other. And as you can see, there are slugs assembled on this particular band. You also can see the, what I would call the stop bar in the middle that holds the one new slug that you're putting on up against the bands and slugs that are already clamped to the band at the left. You would normally as you're tightening the screws, would normally pull the band to the right so that those, the new slug that you're putting this, attaching is butted up to the slug to its left. A critical, again, cleanliness, tension, such that we produce the right length band. One of the problems is this. if you put all this, make a band, and you can't get the last slug into its slot, the band is no good. If you produce it so it's too long and there's a gap between the last slug you put in and the first slug you put on, which would be to the, on it, then you also have a problem. So the band length is very critical to having a decent band ready to use. You can see the different pieces in the on the type on to the left or to the right next to the tool you can see the back bars and on the left I think those are slugs 
that have yet to be put on. No, those are, those are screws on it. So, and also key to assembly is a set of, is a pair of tweezers to actually handle these pieces. They're so small it doesn't work with your fingers. So you need tweezers, both put the bar down, back bar, and also to put the screws in the hole. And then you use the tool with the dark blue handle to tighten the screws up to the proper attention for that size screw, odd 80s. So that's the fixture, very time consuming and uh, have to be a little bit of a craftsman to put it together so it stays. This is a finished band. Well, it's not a finished band. It looks like it's a broken band, but it shows how the slugs are, how they separate when you bend it around a, a, some sort of radius. But the, you can see the characters. You can see where the odd 80 screws go in. And you can't see the back bar that's behind each slug to clamp it to the band. But this is, this is an assembled band. But I'm pretty sure this was one that was broken and is very dirty with ink been used, print ink and paper and all that stuff. So it's dirty band. To reuse, we reuse all the slugs, but they have to be very clean to reassemble into a proper band. Okay. <laughs> This is the mandrel pieces that is crucial to making the belt the right, right length. It really depends on the two halves here that are adjustable in and out because that's what you wind the tape on and the wire is wound on that to give you the exact length of the tape needed. So the crucial part is to adjust these two halves of the center plate. There's a bottom plate, the center two halves of the center plate, and then a cover plate that goes on top. And the crucial part is to get these plates that's actually wound with tape and the wire on at the right dimension. And you can do that by putting different spacers in between here to spread it apart or put it together a little bit. So that's how you develop the right length to the tape. It may be a trial and error method, but it was originally designed to theoretical diameter about a half inch center hole here. And then we cut it in two because I had to space it apart on the second iteration to get the tape to right and chain the right length to get the last type in. So that's the critical part is moving these two halves to the right dimension. And then we take the cover plate and that goes on essentially like that on it. And then you screw it fast with the screws in the binding holes here, like so. And when that's together, you have a completed mandrel ready to begin putting the sticky, first the, the tape on inside out so that the tape is on the outside on it because we want the wires, when we wind on top of the tape, to nestle into the sticky stuff to hold them in place. So. At the next iteration after this, once you fasten this together at the right dimensions to put the tape on. And that will be, be our next process. This is the assembled mandrel. And the next step is to put on the first layer of tape that goes under the wires. There will be a second layer on top of the wires. And the reason for the tape is to trap the wires so they don't fly apart when we take it off the mandrel. So that's why the tape is on there. I have started the tape on this first post and you bring it out, put it through the slot, and then onto the, you take the tape around the whole mandrel. This is 
laying on top of the two center pieces that we discussed before. Again, this is sticky side out because we're going to lay the wires in it. We bring it around here, all the way around, and then carefully and keep tension on it because it has to be perfectly smooth to get a good length tape because you can't have any kinks or anything in it. So then the trick is, is to carefully put the tape through the slot and cut enough tape so that we can wind the tape around the other post. carefully and wind the tape on top of it. Tighten up that that one. I haven't got it around good enough. We tighten it up and tighten the screw to hold it in place. And the tape has to be tight all the way around. This particular example I have it a little loose but if you're careful you can start it on there and wind it up and maintain good tension all the way around and then you have the tape in place so that the next step would be take the whole mandrel and onto the other structure over there to actually start winding the tape or winding the wires on top of the sticky part of the tape. So, okay, so you're going to mount the mandrel on the, in between the first spacers. So you've, you've placed spacers on that side, yep. this side here. Now you're going to mount the mandrel on the bolt. Okay. I'm trying to get it through there. It's a tight fit, so. Spacer in, in the hole. Hold it there. Okay, got it. It's in the hole. Tell me if it's starting to come through. Okay. I'm not sure it will. Looks like it's going in. I'm not sure. Feel it. It's coming. Keep going. Keep going. Well, I yep. want it to stick out on the bare hair Keep pin. Going. Just a little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. Keep going. Um, okay. It's just the hair. Is that enough or too, uh, not enough? Well, I probably need a little more. Okay. 
Okay, good. Uh, now I'm going to put the second spacer yeah, in. That's the intent. You can snap it over the. Yeah. Okay, it's in. Oh, wait a minute, I think it's in. No, nope, not yet. Not yet. Okay, try that. Yep, yep. I feel it. I feel it's coming through. Yep. Good. Yep. Tight fit through the thread don't actually run it through. Is it sticking out yet? Yep. Plenty. Well, that's probably good enough. That we okay. Need. on the outside. Actually, I'm not sure the washer should have been inside, but it's neither here or there. And then the idea of this is I can tighten this up and I can change the drag on the, how easy this spins. I didn't want it backing up. When the, I didn't want it backing up on the, on the wire. as far as I can hold it. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, see, that's too tight already. So that's adjustable so I can change the drag and stuff on it. Good. So that's mounted. Okay. Okay. Actually, so now while we're th this way, why don't we show the wire? Can you run the wire through? Thanks. Or is that too, is that too much? <laughs> that's too hard. I can't even see the blooming wire. I mean, okay. But normally the wire would come, the spool of wire that you're going to draw the wire from would come from here. It would run through a tensioner that maintains some tension on the wire as you pull it on and also won't let it back up because you don't want to, you don't want to loosen the spool of wire because wire goes every which way. So you got to keep control of the wire at all times. So this is a tensioner for this way and an anti-backup to keep it from spiraling off the, off the drum. But you feed the wire from there through this control, through the bottom of this slot right here, over this bolt, and then you can tighten these up so it squeezes on the wire so you get the exact control of the wire as it comes out the edge here. And then you can steer that, where that wire goes across this by the long handle out here pivots about this area. Lots of motion here gives you a little motion there. That's the way you control as you're watching, as you're turning the, as you're turning the mandrel and feeding the wire on. You can control its position by here. And the idea is to start on one side and slowly wind the wires side by side as you go slowly across, moving it across this way after. Depending on the size wire, in the vicinity of 50 to 60 turns of the mandrel on it. This is the complete fixture for winding the wire on the mandrel to, to make the cable on it. Strictly a structure to hold things in the right place on it. The wire itself is on the spool down there. It's 4 thousandths diameter wire, which is very hard to see. It, it comes up through this white uh, 
instrument here, which is really a tensioner to keep tension on the tape as we wind it on. And it also provides an anti-backup. You don't want the wire backing up in the spool and winding. So the spool, by tightening the pull or the spindle, you can put drag on it to your amount that you need to maintain tension. And you bring it up through here, through a slot and over a bolt here that you can tighten the bolt and it will squeeze the wire down to where you have it real good control of the wire as it comes out. And then by a pivot here, we can guide the wire as we wind it to exactly laying it down right next to the wire, previous wire, until you've got all the wires all the way across, essentially a quarter of an inch wide of a wire. It depends whether you're using 3 thousandths wire, which they originally used, and this one I put together with 4 thousandths wire, new to availability. Uh, so there's a few less winding with the 4 thousandths wire than there were with the th original 3 thousandths diameter wire. But once you start the wire, there's a small hole in the side plate nearest you that you can stick the wire through and tape it fast to start the wire. And then we basically turn the mandrel, watch the wire being laid down through the microscope, watch the wire being laid down, and we steer it with our right hand exactly where you want the wire to lay as you continually turn the mandrel on it. Typically, you need the microscope to be able to see the wire that you're working with. And typically, you need a fairly bright light directly on the spot that you're looking at really have good definition to see what you're doing. But basically, keep turning this and steering it with your right hand until you get completely all the way across the quarter inch wide on it. Typically, it's been this 60 turns or so. This is a continuous wire all the way around on it. And then once you get your terminal on, you take the wire and then there's this small spot in this plate back first plate that you can stick the wire through and tape it fast and and cut it off so you got control of the wire so that's the way you lay the wire down and consistently we're in the next to each other continuous operation it takes you a while to do it but if you do it slowly and control you can do a good job and it should work well now you have a completely wound wire nestled into the sticky part of the original tape that we put down inside out. Okay, that's the winding. You completed the windings. What do you do next? What you would do next, of course, is once you have the wire disconnected from your other one, you have to take the mandrel off the spool take out the axle, take the mandrel out, and you take it apart. But before you, if you take it out of here, before you take it apart, you again take the similar, same tape that you have initially down, only this time with the sticky side down against the wires, wrap it all the way around. And it, you have to be very careful because you don't want any lumps. It has to be nice and smooth all the way around. The trick to a good band is that it's smooth, no bumps, no irregularities, all the way around, continuous. Then you have a good band. And then you, once you have the tape on, you take the mandrel out, and take the one side off, loosen the two halves that are still in there, loosen them so you can slide them together. And that will release the tape to come off very easily. It won't come off unless you actually move the internal halves together to release the tension on it. But then you should have a good band. Handle very much with care, no kinks on it, because then you have to work on the next process of actually installing the slugs on it. This is the assembly of how you actually assemble 
the slugs, the type slugs, onto the band that we just made on the other fixture. This is the, the wire with the tape, and, the, and we've got a complete band. That's what ties everything together here. So this fixture, and this is just to hold it, keep track of it. The action is actually here in the middle where we actually mount the slugs onto the band. And the way we do that <clears throat> is, assuming you have some already on, we take one of the back bars. And by the way, we really need twi tweezers to handle the little back bars and this odd 80 screws that go through the slugs into the back bar and tighten onto the band. We put one of those under the band. We put one of those slugs back bars on it. Take the slug that we want to go. We put it on the back bar so it straddles the back bar in position because it fits in a notch in the back of the slugs. We put the back bar in, in there. Fit the type down on it so it straddles the back bar. And again, tweezers work nice. And then once you have that, you take your tweezers and by the way, both the type, the back bars, the slugs, and the screws, and the end of the tightening wrench all have to be demagnetized. Otherwise, you, you just can't handle these small pieces. They're sticking and, and you have no control. So take your tweezers, put a, into each hole two, uh, two screws, each hole, and then you pull the band this way so it butts right up against the previous slug you had on. Because remember, the idea is all these slugs, when it's going down the straightaway of the train, they all butt together on it. If you don't butt them together nicely, then it's, it's, the band ends up too long and you can't get the last slug in. Which brings up another subject. All these slugs, back bars, screws, and slugs have to be exceptionally clean of all ink, dirt, oil, and anything. Because <clears throat> if you have one of these slugs, if all the slugs have a thousandth too much on it, when you get through, you won't be able to fit the last band, the last slug in, and you'll, ha and you'll have to start again. So cleanliness is key. So we clean, I clean these with, <laughs> I can't even remember what it is, but it was a good cleaning agent. It took off ink, grease, and all sorts of stuff. It's actually the orange, what's the orange? Something wrong. That, uh, that did a good job on it. It, it cuts through the old ink and all that stuff because these are previously owned or uh, used slugs and had actually printed. So cleanliness is key. And you pull the band tightly. So that this slug butts up really tight to the previous one that's clamped on. You use your wrench in the holes and tighten the screws. Finger tight at first and then go back and forth and snug them up to the prescribed uh, tension. And you'll have to get that off of uh, information on what the tightening torque should be for these odd 80 screws on it. And you do that for each slug all the way around. And if you've got the right length band, the last slug will fit in its slot and be essentially tight between the first one you put on and the, and then the next to the last one you put on. Then you've got a good band. If there's a gap in there, the band is too long and you've really got to make a new band. There's no other way to fix it. If it's, if it's, it won't fit in, your band obviously is too short. One of the possibilities is they're not clean enough, but if you've done an excellent job on cleaning them, the last one should fit in nice and smooth. That's why there's a split hub on the winding fixture that you can adjust and uh, compensate for whatever, however your band. It may take you several iterations to get a decent band. It took me two, by the way. The first one, I couldn't fit the last slug in on it. So, and that's how you do it. 
uh, the key, as I pointed out, is cleanliness to the parts and maintaining them, putting them together. And that's why the fixture's got a bar in it, keeps, keeps that one from going through. And you tighten the band up and you just work yourself around to the whole band. Over here, there's just an arrangement to where you can, prior to starting this process, you can lay out the type and the process and the se uh, sequence that it's supposed to be in, whatever you're building. And there's typically on the standard band, there's five arrays, one, two, three, four, and five. 48 characters, essentially duplicates, every one of these. And they simply go in, put it all together, and that comes five arrays, you get it on there, and you have a completed band. Good luck. <laughs>